listening to PetLifeRadio.com. What Were You Thinking? is brought to you by Dog.com. For everything and anything dog, shop Dog.com today for all the top brands. Greenies, Frontline, Kong, Nylabone, Royal Canin, and more. Shop at Dog.com and use the promo code SADTHINK, S-A-D-T-H-I-N-K, and get $15 off your order of $75 or more. You've had a long day at work, and you can't wait to just get home, take off your shoes, plop yourself down in your favorite chair, and relax. Ah. You walk up to your tranquil residential home and your neatly manicured lawn in your quiet suburban neighborhood, put the key in the lock, open the door, and... Yes, the pets have gone wild! What were you thinking? Welcome to the show about everything you always wanted to know about exotic pets. Where to get them, what to feed them, and how to care for them. You'll even find out why some people live with a monkey. Now, here's your host, exotic pet expert and author, Bob Tart. Hey, Bob, what were you thinking? Burn down the London Theatre. One. Uh, burn down the big empire. Two. Burn down the London Theatre. Three. You burn down the big empire. Ba la la. the theater. Well, <laughs> welcome to what were you thinking? Uh, I hope you enjoy our. Uh, New theme music there. Uh, I'm using an almost impossible to trace obscure Calypso song so that we don't get into any copyright problems. But uh, you know, the main reason uh, I'm starting off with that little ditty is because that way I hope we can avoid my producer Mark Winter playing that kind of dinky introduction music. So uh, this is uh, Bob Tart, your host of What Were You Thinking? and the author of the books. And Slay by Ducks, Fall Weather, and the eventually forthcoming The Funnel of Happiness. And I'm here today with the most beloved book character oh. in the entire history of literature, oh, Mr. Bob. Mr. Book Character Bill Holm. Oh, thank you, Bob. That was very, very kind of you, and I understand where you're coming from in that. I've just been receiving a lot of, of uh, contact through Facebook and... Uh, People who really do seem to um, appreciate my my book character. Oh, did you say something? <laughs> Sorry, I was putting the CD back. I kind of drifted off. I wasn't quite finished, but you know, that, I mean, that's right. We can continue on. I, I just wanted to express my gratitude to all those people who have been so kind lately. Are those the two or three people who uh, try and become friends with you on Facebook, and you hit the ignore button? <laughs> exactly, but it's very kind of them. It is kind of them. Um, I just did a podcast with Linda yesterday, and uh, I mentioned that it was the very first, even though this is uh, September, that it was the first podcast of the year that I did with Linda. And I said, you know, and here it's uh, uh, September 4th, 2001. I said 2001. Did you, that you were like five years off. I know it. So I, I apologize to my uh, listeners. That's ridiculous. For that. yeah. So What's here, happening to your brain? Um, that's, that's too large of a question. <laughs> so here it is one day before Labor Day, 2000 and something. And, uh, Bill, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but wouldn't you say that this is crazy weather? Wouldn't you say this is really crazy weather? I don't want to put words in your mouth, but this is crazy weather, isn't it? Um, I suppose I could put it that way. Well, let's talk about the lost... <laughs> <laughs> here, I, we, we got our agenda wait, wait, right wait, here. Well, We're going to talk minute, about I, the, the lost episode of What Were You Thinking? Right, 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 right. Okay, do you remember that a little I bit? I do. Yep, that was back in April. That was in April, yes. And we did an entire uh, episode of What Were You Thinking about the TV series Lost. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. And that was the lost joke as well. Yeah, that's right. Someone <laughs> laughed out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, would you like to describe that lost episode a little bit and maybe explain why it's still lost? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. We uh, went to a talk, as I recall. Well, you you gave the talk. 
I <laughs> there I were like attended. they were like <laughs> technically what, speaking, was, I attended. Where was, where was the talk again? It was at the Mathai A E R O U Botanical Gardens in Ann Arbor to the um, Washtenaw County Society of the Audubon. Exactly, and uh, oh yes, okay, and so you went there and like. The reason you had an audience was because this was just a regular monthly meeting of the Washtenaw County Audubon Society. Is that correct? Yeah, they were desperate for a speaker. Yes, and so they picked probably the most inappropriate bird kind of pet speaker they could. Right, because this is all about wild birds, and I gave a talk about pet birds. Which is not about what they like to uh, actually shoot the birds so that they can be painted. Yes, Yes, so that um, I believe it's, it was actually a member of the Washtenaw County Audubon Society that shot the last ivory bill woodpecker. <laughs> but they but got they a really a f- nice drawing nice, of it. Yeah, and they had a federal license to do so by okay. the well, good people fine, in Washington. So, so anyway, um, we uh, did a uh, podcast about that entire event, and the first half was pretty darn good. Mm-hmm. There was a lot, of, uh, a lot of good Buddy Epson material. Oh, that was good. But the second half... You're gonna, well, you, this is worth waiting for. Yeah, the second half fell apart a little bit, so mm-hmm. I hope to be able to do a little editing to uh, make it work. That's going to be a real challenge. But the problem was I was so demoralized after that that I just didn't haven't done a show since mm-hmm. then. Um, also, I've been working intensively on my new book, The Fun L of Happiness. <laughs> So What's it about, Bob? It's about our six cats, the time when we had six cats. And if that doesn't make you want to buy it, nothing will. <laughs> Whoa, this guy had six cats. I'm buying that. So, um, You know I've had cats, too. Maybe I could relate to that. Yeah. yeah maybe one of his cats is like my cat. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I got a shocking email. Excuse me while I have a little coffee. Well, while Bob has a cup of coffee, I'll fill in some time here. With uh, oh, he, I got it. Back. <laughs> I'm gonna open this. Uh, this crazy it's, weather we're having. It is crazy. It's, like, it's a crazy. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it's <laughs> crazy weather, wouldn't you say? So I actually got a shocking email from my. Producer. You know that reminds me of somebody. Yeah, Keith Olbermann. That's right. I got a shocking email from Keith <laughs> Olbermann a couple no, days no, ago. No, no, not your email from Keith Olbermann. His technique. What is, is that? It's a, a motorcycle gang. Oh. Look, there's like a whole stream of them. Good grief. Ooh. What are they doing at Muskegon Wastewater? What I want to know is, what I want to know is why they have to make so darn much noise. Yeah, what's wrong with these kids today? I mean, it's okay to go out on a motorcycle, but why does it have to be so loud? Well, I guess they're just born to be wild. <laughs> well, we, yes, we had our day, didn't they're we? They're the wild angels. <laughs> so, so he often, he'll ask a long, complicated question and reach a conclusion in his question, and when he, when he finishes it, to, he'll ask the guest, wouldn't you agree? You're talking about my producer, Mark Winter, right? <laughs> he sent me, Mark Winter sent me an email last week, and I just about bowled over on my chair. Really? As, well, the caster needs fixing. <laughs> and um, he asked me when I was going to do another podcast. And you said? Well, I was too shocked to reply because why would he care? So I finally decided there must be some money in it for him somewhere to even ask that. Oh, and I want to know where's, where's my cut? Exactly. <laughs> and then consequently, where's mine? Well, you're way down. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's going to be years before I say anything. And so you, well, I'll make a, a, a memoriam uh, <laughs> gift in lieu of flowers. How about that? Sort of like Amway. Yeah. So anyway, and even three listeners emailed me. Really? Yeah, and said, when the heck are you doing well, this the actual, show? I mean, listeners? Yeah, I know it. Okay. And what's funny is I even have some listeners who don't know that I'm um, author Bob Tart. They know me as podcaster Bob. Really? Even though in every podcast you mention that you're an author? Yeah. Wow. Yep. But And they aren't motivated to go buy your books? Heck no. <laughs> so anyway, today's mission, Bill and I are... Uh, at uh, Muskegon Wastewater <clears throat> and uh, Muskegon Wastewater Treatment Plan, and we've done some fine programs. This might be our third Muskegon Wastewater program podcast, Bobcast. <laughs> Were you aware of that? <laughs> you know, I I, re- I barely remember even doing one. How long have you and Marsha been married now? Good question. 
Two years. Two years. Two and a half years. I was just wondering if it's, isn't it about time that a little bundle of joy is coming along? Well, I have a big announcement to make here, uh, right here today to everybody. A kitty cat? <laughs> That's what I was asking about. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, then I, <laughs> I shouldn't have mentioned that other okay. thing then. Okay. So, no, I, the kitty cat, oh, yes, um, probably at the end of October. Cool. We'll start looking. Good. And what we'd like is, you know, a little older cat. You know, one we don't need him at the kitten stage. We'd like to, you know, you know, a little older cat's nice. It's harder for them to find a nice home. How does the name Lucy strike you for a cat? <laughs> How about that's... a cat that's already named? How about a cat that's already broken in? <laughs> broken in. Well, um, I don't know. I'll, I'll, we'll t- consider that. But, you know, it's a, it's a personal decision. Yes, it is. So here, I'm sorry I asked such a personal question. So here we are in Muskegon Wastewater, and this is a really good and uh, pleasant place to look for birds. They love it here for some reason. Yeah, it's one of the premier locations. In fact, there's a red carpet here, and um, Rona Barrett. This is one of the... Rona pr- Barrett? <laughs> <laughs> okay, share. <laughs> Who shows up at the Rivers? Is? And, uh, Dorothy Parker has been here, too. <laughs> look, there's Bob Benchley. Come on over here. <laughs> so, so anyway, well, my publisher is Algonquin. Oh, I love it. Right. Yeah. So we're here to um, see two species of birds, two types of birds. They're not even species. Two categories of birds that are migrating this mm-hmm. time of year. Shorebirds and warblers. Mm-hmm. And Bill, I have a riddle for you. It's not a riddle. I have a question. What do shorebirds and warblers have in common? They are all unknown to us. Exactly. Or we could say they all look the same to us. We could say that... Yeah, they all look the same. We can't identify either of them. That's another... Yes, that was yes, that was the punch. And I think it even gets worse than that. I mean, it isn't just that if you have any two shorebirds together, we can't tell them apart. No, no, no. If we had one shorebird and a warbler, a warbler. sitting together, I couldn't tell which was which. And yet, there is such great <clears throat> variation among um, each of those categories, allegedly. Speaking of categories, when we did our last show, we were in Turbo, your Volvo. Oh, this is a yes. new car. <laughs> yes, that's it's true. Turbo saved my life not long ago in a very serious car crash. He gave his life for me, and you know, and I had to say goodbye to him, and it was very difficult. And now I have a a new car. Um, it's another Volvo named Gus, and um, but he's you, huh? You had a car in between Turbo and Gus. Yes, I did. I had another Volvo. I had another Volvo for a whole day. And that was totaled when it was parked um, by someone who was, um, I'd say, <sighs> had taken some drugs. And and maybe it had a drink or two. And well, what about the other person? <laughs> 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 and so, you know, it was like, what's going on? You know, I, I, I had a nearly fatal car crash. And then I get a new one, and then 24 hours later, it's totaled again. And then I get this car, and wh- and and I'm I, it's t- it's it's caused me to go into therapy, to tell you the truth. Well, and yeah, not just that. This happened shortly after you got back from a trip to Cuba. Right, right, and which which was very rewarding, and yet very stressful. And it puts you on the map of the uh, um, CIA. CIA. So mm-hmm. they so they were out to get me. They almost got me. I think maybe they were just trying to send a message. I saw a guy, uh, name of a guy on the web, is some David Ick, I think, or Ickies or something. And he David be- Ick? Yeah, yeah. He, uh, somebody in I England. I wouldn't believe what he said. He believes that uh, the government is controlled by shape shifting lizard people from <laughs> Arcturus, I think. What's Arcturus? Um, I, well, I th- where is Arcturus? I think it's one of the ponds at the Muskegon Wastewater <laughs> Treatment System. And that's where we are well, now. I've so- seen those there. Yeah, yeah, they're there. So anyway, we're about to go and look for uh, shorebirds, and I've given up on warblers already. I mean, we there's nothing here. No, I mean we're 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 true. We're parked in a grassy field, and to show you our identification skills, Bill just said there's a crane over there, (laughs) or is it a a heron? So that's about the level that we're at. And it was a warbler. Yes, it was a warbler. Uh, By the way, I'm thinking of doing a book about birding. (laughs) <laughs> I don't have a title yet, but the subtitle will be How I Became an Inept Birder in Only 15 Years. And, uh, Bill, you would play a large part in that book. I, I really helped the whole I, I I cannot remember a bird from one 
birding expedition to the next, much less a call, which counts, in case you didn't know. In the birder's world, if you just hear a bird, it counts as seeing a bird, and I, which is absolutely ridiculous. But still, I, can't, I don't have that advantage. Well, there's a... Uh, here, I'm going to put this on pause a second because <laughs> <laughs> cause we're running out of time. Hang on. Okay, we're about to go to a station break, but I want to mention beer bill. Beer beer bill. Beer bill. <laughs> uh, here's a, a report I saw on the Muskegon County Nature uh, Center website, Muskegon Nature Club website recently. Uh, last week, 74 Baird's sandpipers were seen here, oh. 27 Wilson's phalaropes, oh. 3 semi-palmated plovers, 26 killdeers, of course, that's all we'll see. We'll see 27 killdeers, <laughs> 3 lesser yellowlegs, 5 sanderlings, 1 pectoral, 1 semi-palmated, 12 leased, and 8 potted sand... 8 spotted... <laughs> potted... <laughs> potted panpipers. <laughs> Those panpipers, they're all over here, you know? I'm, I'm tired of panpiping. Yeah, well, so my question I'd rather is, just what, be potted. Opinion on that report before we go to That's station That's absolutely break? ridiculous. I said, I, I would think that... All of those birds are just kill deers to begin with. So it wasn't 26 kill deers, it was like 300 kill deers. Because there's no. Look at that over there, though. Oh, those are morning doves. No, they aren't. They're kill deers. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to go to <laughs> station break. Uh, you're listening to What Were You Thinking? A special Muskegon Wastewater uh, edition. And uh, we'll see you again. <laughs> What Were You Thinking? We'll be right back after Bob gets the ducks out of his living room. Don't go away. There's a movement afoot. Shoebuy.com. Join the millions of people who shop Shoebuy.com's over 400 brands and 500,000 products. Order now and get free shipping and free return shipping. Shoebuy.com, the world's greatest shoe store. Walk your dog in style and comfort. Enter the code THINKING, T-H-I-N-K-I-N-G, at checkout and get a 10% discount plus free shipping at Shoebuy.com. Love your pets but wish their medications were a lot less expensive? They are at 1-800-PET-MEDS. You'll not only save on flea and heartworm medications, but on prescriptions for arthritis, incontinence, thyroid, and more. And you get fast service, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Plus, our licensed pharmacists ensure accuracy, monitor drug interaction, and more. See why over 5 million people have trusted their pet's health to 1-800-PET-MEDS, America's largest pet pharmacy. Call now or order online. Go. Go to PetMeds.com forward slash what, W-H-A-T, to get 10% off any order and free shipping on orders of $39 or more. Hi, this is Marcy Davis and my service dog, Whistle, and we're your hosts of Working Like Dogs on Pet Life Radio. Working Like Dogs is the show where you can learn everything you ever wanted to know about working animals or working dogs. Whether you're a member of a working dog team or you've just seen a working dog or animal out at the mall or the grocery store and you're curious about how these amazing animals work with their human partners, then Working Like Dogs is the show for you. Join us for the inside scoop at Working Like Dogs on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Okay, ducks are in the pond, rabbits in his hutch, and monkeys... Ow! In my car! Oh, okay, well, I go check my insurance policy. We'll turn you back over to Bob. So here we are driving along uh, between some treatment ponds, and I wish that this was a video podcast so people could see just the plethora of shorebirds that we're seeing here. Um, This is an extravaganza of wildlife. Actually, we're just seeing uh, ducks, and I refuse to even identify them. That's my opinion of uh, ducks, other than my sweet little pet ducky ducks. Oh, they're so sweet. And uh, I'm seeing gulls, and uh, are those ringbill or herring gulls? There's a herring gull right in front of us. He's got a a, a herring aid, so (laughs) that makes him a herring gull. Uh, But 
I'm not seeing any of these shorebirds yet. I there hasn't been one shorebird. No, and I just saw a car, uh, somebody uh, turning around in disgust since they yeah. didn't see anything either. But we're going to persevere. We're not quitters. Heck, we're going to stay here another eight minutes. <laughs> so we're looking at this mysterious bird that's perched up ahead. And I'm thinking it's probably, even though it has a black head and looks uh, kind of interesting. Could it be a starling? Well, I think it was almost certainly a starling, but it's, it's, it's got it's weird plumage. A a very we, weird plumage. It must be, it's a molting starling. <laughs> it's got to be, it's just a starling that's molting. We're experts, well, actually, and that's my opinion. <laughs> my opinion is that the closer we get, the more it looks like a starling. I'm writing her down as starling. <laughs> well, that's quite a sighting. I mean, I, I never expected to see a starling here. No, I didn't either. So okay, so we're doing well so far. We've okay. seen a seagull and a starling. A seagull. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a bird is a seagull? So I thought I saw what I uh, thought was some kind of a bird of prey, but it turned out it was just a, a juvenile seagull, <laughs> and it's kind of dark plumage. And um, as Bill pointed out, a couple times we look at these uh, ducks, the, uh, uh, I think the Latin Whatever term, ducky wuckus. <laughs> and um, we thought they maybe were grebes or something more exotic, but what did you say about the sun? I said the sun is playing tricks. It is. It's a regular Fata Morgana out here today. It can. I fought a Morgana. <laughs> That's a kind of mirage sailors would <laughs> so see at sea when, <laughs> when they were uh, off the coast of Sicily. <laughs> so uh, uh, we're not doing... T uh oh and this uh, one spot where we used to see uh, shorebirds here uh, because it was kind of dry and the shorebirds would hang out there thinking that it was a shore because it was dry. It's, they, now, yeah. it's now full of water, so... Um, and they're, they 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 were smart enough to leave. Yeah. So um, well, they're, they're not water birds. Keep that in mind. They're shore birds. They're, that's right. They are shore birds. Sure enough. So we're probably not going to see anything today. What were you thinking? We'll be right back after Bob gets the ducks out of his living room. Don't go away. FTD's network of over 40,000 florists around the world have been creating beautiful handcrafted arrangements for 100 years. Each arrangement is delivered the same day and backed by FTD's 7-day satisfaction guarantee. For a century, people have trusted their most important occasions to the flower experts at FTD. Since Pet Life Radio is all about puppy dogs and flowers, our listeners, that's you, can get a 20% discount on your order. Just go to florop.com and use the code THINKING at checkout. F-L-E-U-R-O-P dot com and use the code word T-H-I-N-K-I-N-G. There isn't anything we won't do to make sure they're getting the best products and the best care. So when you ask us a question like, So how do you feel about cat condos? We can say from experience, Feels like home. For her. Enter the code WHAT, W-H-A-T, and save 10% on orders of $65 or more, plus free shipping at Petco.com. Welcome to Sassy Seniors, a show about our fabulous older dogs and cats. I'm your host, Kelly Jackson. You know, I wanted to create a show to really showcase our senior pets. And, you know, as the human population ages and lives longer, of course, so are our wonderful pets. But many of us with aging pets, it's so interesting. We have a tough time realizing or really admitting that they are seniors. So, in a way, I kind of like to think of our senior pets as, as wise puppies. What do you think about that? Be sure to join us for another dish of Sassy Seniors. And remember, celebrate your senior pets. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Okay, ducks are in the pond, rabbits in his hutch, and monkeys... Oh, in my car! Oh, okay, well, I go check my insurance policy. We'll turn you back over to Bob. You're listening to What Were You Thinking? An interesting podcast with your host, Bob Tart, author of Enslaved by Ducks, and book character Bill Holm. 
And we've already given up on one entire three square mile section of Muskegon wastewater because we didn't see interesting birds right away. I want to see them now. So we're going to um, go to another corner of the wastewater system. And usually though, if there's interesting birds to see, we see something right away. And uh, I'm not a person to hang my hat on optimism. Oh, and there's no reason to hang your hat on optimism. No, I've already I've... curled up in a fetal position and I feel kind of sick because I'm so uh, let down. By... Well, it could be the odor as well. Oh, it could be. Oh, We're at man. the other side of uh, one of the large uh, ponds and uh, I just spotted a uh, pied-billed grebe. But, um, Big deal. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not like one of those longer-nosed grebes that you want to see. That could be a horned grebe or an eared grebe. Or, or a nosed grebe. Yeah, nosed grebe. So, um, you know, we say good luck to them. Well, I don't wish him any ill. No, no, good good luck to the grebe. Um, so, what, what was that? <laughs> Okay, uh, we're giving up already. Um, doesn't take me long. Um, so, uh, but we're going to go back near the administration building. Excuse me for not saying much right now, but I'm in the process of Bill's trying to turn around without sending us hurtling <laughs> over this berm to that stay we're out on. of this foul water. Yeah, it really is bad today, and I'm so if I don't say anything. It's because I'm busy focusing on my driving here. Every moment that you become silent, more people join our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, while we're uh, driving back to the ad there, building, I did it. and then we're going to look for some warblers there because, you know, let's look on the bright side. There. I was window complaining a little while ago that uh, if we saw some shorebirds, we wouldn't be able to tell them apart anyway. So this saved us a lot of head scratching. <laughs> okay, we're at the ad building, and uh, it's closed, or otherwise I was gonna go in and place an ad. I was gonna place an ad for <laughs> wanted, shorebird, please bring friends. So anyway, we're at the ad building, and uh, there's a road that uh, runs along the ad building, and there's going to be two people burden that road that runs along the ad building. Those two people are going to be us. Yep, so we're going to go bird the road alongside the ad building. And uh, if we see any wobblers while we're burdened, we'll let you know. Oh, back in the car. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bill. Uh, so, well, we birded the path. Wow, did we bird. By the uh, admin building. And I would say that... Uh, we, Excuse me while I get me some water. We birded that path so well, I could say that. I, I hate to say it to anyone who's planning on coming to this area now, but I'm afraid that after we birded that trail, we birded it so thoroughly, it's birded out. We done birded it. It's birded out. So don't even come here. We birded it out. So we saw several flycatchers. And I don't feel so bad about not being able to identify them because, really, these are the empids. <laughs> Empidomax flycatchers. Yeah. And you really, unless you hear them singing, like the uh, willow flycatcher says, Fitzbew. <laughs> he does, from uh, his stint on uh, Land of the Giants. That's right. So uh, we saw several of those. And then I did I did see me a uh, um, blue-gray gnat catcher. Which I have never knowingly seen before. Right. So um, if you were to have kept a bird list. You don't keep a list of birds, do you? Are you kidding me? So you can add this to your non-existent bird list. Oh, it'll be on there. So anyway, I saw me some snipe up at the uh, uh, Muskegon State Game Area up here. They were uh, along a creek. I is that the story you thought was interesting and that I should share with people? That I saw me some snipe at the... Um, at the creek. At the creek. I thought that creek. was a very... I think that's something our listeners can relate to. Yeah. Yep. So um, it was actually a mushy field. It's not all about just being funny, Bob. It's about... It's supplying information. Supplying because information. if anyone is here, they know now where they can see see them some snipes. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a large bird. That's probably that one we saw before. That oh, there's two. There's two. Isn't that nice? It's the two peregrines. Someone... Someone saw them a pair of peregrines here, and I think that's it. I think that's the pair of peregrine falcons, don't you? Positively. Yep. So 
we did see a pair of peregrine falcons, and we're looking at them right now. So that's pretty good. That's something. Reminds me of a story. Did you hear about the realtor who was showing the house to the Southern Bell? And he said, ma'am, this house was built without a flaw. And she said, well, where does you all stand? <laughs> kind of reminds me of that. I can see why. What Were You Thinking? We'll be right back after Bob gets the ducks out of his living room. Don't go away. What Were You Thinking? is brought to you by Pet Care Rx, America's most affordable pet pharmacy. Pet Care Rx offers the same meds as top vets, but with a savings up to 50%. And if you find a lower price on a certified EPA and FDA approved medication, Pet Care Rx will match that price. So go to PetCareRx.com. Use promo code THINK10. T H I N K, the number 10, and receive $10 off orders of $50 or more. Hello? Danica, where have you been? Oh, Graham, I've been busy, you know? Racing, GoDaddy girl. Oh, I built my own online store with GoDaddy. Really? Let me see. Grandma'sauction.com? Hey, aren't those Grandpa's golf clubs? Grandma needs her bingo money. Use promo code WHAT10, W-H-A-T, the number 10, and get a .com domain name for just $7.49 at GoDaddy.com. If you ask the question, what do I want, what do I need, I'll take a Love My Pets, the new single by Mark Winter, available on iTunes. When you're looking to add a pet into your life, consider adopting a homeless animal from your local shelter or rescue group. Whether you want a kitten, puppy, or a more mature pet, a purebred or a -a one-of-a-kind mixed breed, even a rabbit or hamster, your shelter has the best selection of animals anywhere. All screened for good health and behavior. PetLifeRadio.com presents Take Me Home with your host, Susan Daffron. Join us each week as we showcase wonderful pets, tell stories, and even throw some pet education into the mix. So get ready to find out why the pet adoption option can be a great way to add a furry companion into your life. Take Me Home every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Okay, ducks are in the pond, rabbits in his hutch, and monkeys... Ow! In my car! Oh, okay, well, I go check my insurance policy. We'll turn you back over to Bob. Hi, we're back. And uh, we just birded the uh, Muskegon State Game Area. That's oh, what it is. we birded it hard. We did, we did. And, um... We did see a warbling, hear a warbling vireo. And I didn't mention that when we were at Muskegon Wastewater, we also heard two warbling vireos. So I have to say that even though the other birds have let us down today, no one can say that the warbling vireo isn't carrying his weight. That's right, and it really is inspiring. I think I realize what's going on that we haven't been seeing many birds, and that is that uh, when we arrived at Muskegon Wastewater, this red explorer... SUV was leaving and uh, we saw the same vehicle here 
at Muskegon State Game Area. And I think what happened is that this guy, he's birded these places out. He has completely bird. He birded out. First, he birded out Muskegon Wastewater. Except for that one area that we birded out, that short path. It didn't take us long to No, bird he out. had nearly birded it out. But we birded it. Yeah. This guy has birded this entire recreation area. He might have birded uh, all of uh, West Michigan out. I don't know. but And this is a spot that's listed on the, uh, I think it's the Muskegon Nature Club's uh, home page as the number one birding spot in Muskegon County. You know, and I guess that's true because there were like five birds here. Yeah. Well, we're going to try one more place. There's another entrance to the uh, Muskegon State Game Area, and there's a little crick. I mentioned that crick before, and so... That's where we're headed. We're going to meander along with the crick, and uh, that, that'll be our last chance. So for uh, you half a listener that's still listening to us with one ear, we'll let you know what we don't see. <laughs> okay, well, here we are back at uh, the end of our birding day at Muskegon State Game Area, and I think I finally got the volume of this uh, turned up correctly on this recorder, so... Uh, we're probably only 25 minutes into the show, and we finally got that volume where it's supposed to be. No one wants to hear it anyway. Now, speaking of which, I thought we might summarize our day a little bit, because mm-hmm. I don't know how many of these snippets I recorded that I'm not going to simply just throw out. I have to say, we did see, uh, at this location, we saw many fly catchers again. Many? It was nice. Uh-huh. And we saw a few warblers. Mm-hmm. We saw a good look at what seemed to be a female common yellow throat. Mm-hmm. And while the common yellow throat is a common bird, at least we saw it. Right. And then we saw a little... And identified it. And identified it. We saw a little brown bird that I think is a female indigo bunting, or a young one. Yeah, I'm not convinced. But uh, indigo buntings are pretty darn common birds. I was Bill, I was driving home from the feed mill <laughs> at the beginning of the summer. Uh-huh. I was driving home from the feed mill, yep. and I decided to take some back roads. Mm-hmm. And in a stretch of two miles with the window open in my car, mm-hmm. I heard six singing indigo buntings. Oh, so, isn't that something? So that's a common bird. But um, Is that the whole story? That's it. Wow. That's it. I mean, people, you talk to people about indigo buntings. Yeah, you do. And they say, oh, I wish I had one. And I say, sometimes mm-hmm. you might, you know, and I advise them to learn the song. <laughs> A song. I do. I advise them. I say, you learn the song. Who have you ever advised? I tell on any level. You learn the song of the indigo bunting. Uh huh. Is this what you said? Tell the guys at the feed mill. No. 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 I mean, uh, your you know common everyday Joe and Jane. So you're wandering downtown Lowell. That's my life advice for people. Uh-huh. You learn the song of the indigo bunting. Excellent. Boy, <laughs> I'm going to go home and think about that one. Uh, let's summarize, we got to Muskegon Wastewater, and uh, we saw a peregrine falcon right away, but we didn't mention it because we weren't positive of our identification. We went looking for shorebirds, and sure enough, there was shore no birds. There was shore no birds. There was like... Uh, um, there wasn't a wave of them either. No, there was not. Mm-mm. There no. wasn't even a ripple. Nope, nope, not at all. So, but one might say it was a waste. It was. It was a stinking waste. Oof, boy, did it stink. If you want to talk about wrapping up issues, that is one of them. they got to do something about the smell there. I know. How do they think the general public is going to want to enjoy the Muskegon wastewater system if it smells like a wastewater system? Exactly. Yeah. So anyway, then, as we were leaving, we did bird that trail. Oh. We birded the road. We birded it hard, and we saw... <laughs> Fly catchers and a warbling vireo. We heard it, <laughs> mm-hmm. and a gnat catcher. And I uh, heard a gnat catcher here too. So you can't accuse the gnat catchers of not carrying their weight either. Oh, they do. They do it everywhere they go. They do a good job. Why? What's the difference, Bob, between a gnat catcher and a fly catcher? I believe the gnat catcher is more of a specialist. So then we uh, went to. Um, <laughs> We, we saw a <laughs> pair of peregrines on our way out of Muskegon Wastewater. I think they were from Paris. They were. And um, I think one uh, was the peregrine and one was its au pair. Mm-hmm. And, uh, they were on a birds. parapet. They were on a parapet. And they're beautiful birds, and we saw them when we were leaving. Then, uh, to wrap up, we went to uh, Muskegon State Game Area and... Uh, didn't see much in that Nothing. long, long trek. And then we came here, and I was hoping that we'd be walking along a spring, because I remember the spring 
in the spring when I was here. So I think since we didn't hear it now, I think it's just a vernal spring. So I guess that, I guess that's about it. That uh, <laughs> that was really, ladies and gentlemen, that it's a if brilliant. You think joke. about it. If you think about that joke. It's brilliant. And it's brilliant, and it really is by far the best joke you're going to hear on this whole podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You can see why my um, publisher accepted the funnel of happiness with uh, <laughs> jokes like that. <laughs> so I'm seeing birds in the bushes right now while we're wrapping up the show, but it's too late. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, what is it going to be a flycatcher? That brings us to the end of another episode of What Were You Thinking? <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, boy, if the last episode was a lost episode, this is the well, episode that should have been lost. This is the lost cause episode. Yeah, so I apologize to my producer, Mark Winter, Again. who has to listen to this. And uh, if you think... Boy, you wait, can, I, I'd like to apologize, too. And that's really. a first for you. I really would. But I'm apologizing for Bob, but I would like to apologize for, for this entire effort. I tried to... If we would have seen some spectacular birds well, in the end, it would have been worth it. I suppose it. that was the point of the whole podcast. Hoping. We, yeah, it was to try to be, to try to, you know, to give, a, give a slice of birding life. I mean, you were saying What's that What's it like th- to be a birder, people ask. And you were saying that we may have some glasses on that are uh, like that uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper wore in They Live. And they live, directed by John Carpenter. Mm-hmm. And you could put these glasses on, and then you saw the reality of what was really going on, and you found out that everyone was an alien. Here, we have been given glasses that block out all birds. Yeah, and I think it's possible. I, I have to find out exactly whether this is true or not, but it may be that Bill and I both wear glasses, so we may go to the same optimist. <laughs> So if you would like to be on What Were You Thinking, and anyone can, anyone can come on and talk about anything, anytime. No one wants to. No, no one No one has ever to. taken Bob up, up on that offer. No. Except Linda. No. But so email me at bob at petliferadio.com, and you might ask the question, what does anything that you ever talk about have to do with pets? And maybe you can answer that, and you'll come on the show. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Thinking about buying a monkey? How about a ferret or a skunk? Then check out the show that will answer the burning questions, where do you get them? What do you feed them? How do you take care of them? And most of all, what were you thinking? With exotic pet expert and author Bob Tart, every week on demand from PetLifeRadio.com.